Good afternoon, Shane from DIY Retro Arcade. Today I'm going to show you how to install a Pandora into a Partycade. What you need to do to start is you need to remove all the, the factory Partycade stuff. I have the CPO removed, all the cabling. So it should look like this inside. The only thing you should have left is the speaker and the power cable. And then on the back side, I've already removed the actual game board, so you'll be looking just like that. Unfortunately, with almost every Pandora I've ever installed that has a vertical resolution, the RK1UP LCD is always upside down, and this one is no exception. So the first thing you're going to have to do is physically rotate the monitor. The Pandoras don't have settings to do that, unfortunately. I've already taken out a few screws, but what you'll start to do is take out these six screws right here. I've already got four of them out, so. Try to save a little bit of time. Nobody wants to see me unscrewing stuff. and then you'll take out you'll have four screws here and four screws here again I've already removed some to speed it up a bit so take take all those out and then you'll simply push the monitor out the thing that you're going to notice and you rotate it so it was like this You'll notice the slit in the edge right here. That's factory. Take it, rotate it. So now your slit should be down here on the bottom. The thing you need to notice is now you're hitting right here because it doesn't have the slit in it. You can either do one of two things. You can either cut the, cut the LCD right there if you have a tool to do it with, like a Dremel tool or something, or the easier way is to take your Sharpie, draw an edge around right there, pop the LCD back out, out of the way, and then simply take a, a razor knife and score it really good where you just drew the mark. This stuff is, it, it cuts pretty easily. Just keep scoring it. It doesn't matter how it looks. If it fluffs up, it doesn't really matter. It's gonna be hidden by the bezel. The thing that's most important is right here on the edge, right here on the edge, and right here on the edge. You wanna make sure you get a really deep cut right there. That's what'll, make it pop off easier so once you do that take you a screwdriver and press right there and it pops right off well not right off but it comes off pretty easy kind of clean it up a little bit That's like cardboard, glorified cardboard. That right there should work. Again, all I used was a small flathead and a razor knife. So let's test. You, you may also want to put a mark on the corner here, that way you know which way is up. Again, it's going to be the rounded corner, not the, the edged corner. And see if this fits in. And which it does. Perfect fit. 
So let's put the screws back in. It's always best not to screw the screws all the way in whenever you're reinstalling. Just take them and get them started. That way you can still have some wiggle. If not, you'll end up going crooked on the screws. So just start them and do a few turns. See how it's still? Well, it's, it's pushed in pretty good, but it's still flexing. You can still wiggle it around and get all of them started. Try to go straight. Actually, I'm going to swap to a different screwdriver because this one sucks if I have it. And of course, I don't. It is not very good on the screwdriver. they're all in so let's tighten them down now I wouldn't use a, a, a drill gun this stuff it blows out so easily it's always best to just to do it by hand that way you can kind of feel the tension on the screws Take the bezel, and the bezel does actually go up kind of in here. It doesn't set flush, and then just line up the holes. This is going to be fun with uh, no magnetic screwdriver to get started. tighten them all the way up just get them started once you get the top two started it's not too bad hands all right so let's tighten them down now all six of them are started is all correct and prepared so now let's install the uh, actually taken now and you got a bunch of stuff that you cut out go ahead and clean that out and then take it and flip it around and this is what you have now so let's go ahead and install the LCD driver The LCD driver and saw is just like the three-quarter scale one. It's all the same. Dusty. 
So to do that, all you'll do is take your harness. It'll plug in the red. We'll point this way, like always. In fact, the one thing I've always noticed, it's always, it's, it's got a white dot and then you got a, a triangle right there on the board. So that will remind you that you're in the correct position. Make sure you get this straight. I've seen many people miss a, a prong or two, which will take a chance of frying the card. And then take your, this is assuming that you're purchasing our L, uh, LCD driver. It is separate because not everybody is going to use the factory monitor. Tighten that up. plug this one these only plug one way they have the the little teeth so the teeth always go front into the to the box here only goes one way and that is fully hooked up now now the issue you're going to have is where you mount this you're going to end up having to stick it on the back of of the uh, monitor so what I always do I always take my duct tape because I'm from Texas we like our duct tape and put two strips long enough to make it so the board is not on the metal if you put it directly to the metal as soon as you power it up it'll probably uh, short itself out and release the smoke the magic smoke I'm sticking mine on with double-sided tape. This is what we always use for stuff here. It sticks pretty good. So I'm gonna stick three pieces of double-sided tape on it. Mine's actually the, the foam tape, so it's a little uh, a little taller than standard double-sided tape. I know, like at Lowe's and Home Depot, you can get the the uh, 3M tape is, is pretty fat. I would suggest to use that versus the stuff that's super thin. That'll give you a little more height just in case anything bad did happen. And then take this and you want to point it this way. And again, just stick it onto the tape. Push it in. Make sure you give yourself enough clearance to be able to run the cable and the power cable there. And then it also has an adjustment board which plugs in right here. This is the adjustment board for the screen up and down, the colors and all that good stuff. And we'll stick that, let's say right there. Actually, Let's stick it over here because I'm not sure how much room I have with these buttons sticking up. So let's stick it right here. Uh, actually, we'll put it down here, over here out of the way. That way the power doesn't go straight across it. I'd rather go under it than over it. And we're going to end up using the HDMI in and the video in. So I'll stick it right there. And that is your LCD driver installed. We're going to populate the CPO now with the buttons and joysticks that the kit comes with. All this is included in the kit. This is not. This is uh, our control deck that is made for this kit. You should have four action buttons 
and then a player one player two and you also need a power switch you don't have to mount the power switch here but we just did it to keep everything together makes it a little more nice so let's stick that together real quick You don't have to put put these things in super tight by any means. I always just do hand tighten and then just kind of snug them a little bit. Just like that. like that and then take your power switch and you'll notice the power switch has like a little notch on it take that and it needs to point up at 12 o'clock push that in and then let's go ahead and mount the encoder board this is our easy encoder board you're only going to use, this is set up actually for a two player machine, but we're actually only going to use uh, some of this. You're going to use this side. It's clear, uh, clearly labeled. You're going to use player one start, and then A, B, C, and D. The Sanwa connection. Your main power switch. I actually have a video on this board on YouTube as well if you want to look at it and see what all the features are on it I would suggest to point this this way in case you do want to use LED buttons it'll make it easier to, in, to install using that plug if you're using our control deck you don't have to pre-drill the holes you can push down and it'll push right into the wood without splitting it. Just make sure you don't use over a, a, three, eight, a three eight inch long screw or you'll go through the panel. I'll put a list of all the screws that are used. There's not many. Stick. Actually, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and wire up this stuff first, and then we'll stick the joystick on it since it's going to be in the way at that point. So the blue and white cable will hook to the power switch.
Then on the board here, you want to hook it to the one that says main power switch, which is right here on top. Simply plug that one in. It does not matter what color wire goes where on any of this stuff. I always try to stay consistent, but it, it doesn't really matter. And actually, I'm going to have to give longer cables. So, I'll include some 18-inch cables as well. I'll do, I'll do like uh, four of the 12-inch here and then two of the longer ones in case you need them. Again, I always just stick the same color on each side. It, it doesn't matter. All you're doing is closing the loop. But I think it looks a little more professional if you uh, keep everything the same. Trigger my OCD. over here and grab some 18 inch jumper wires I'll be right back all right back with some 18 inch cables start plugging these things in so if you flip this over that is player one the top one so take that and you'll see the one that says player one start plug it in right there actually I probably could use a 12 inch on that they've been tight and then this is your player two start which will be over here. Plug that in. And then, if you look at it like this, at the front of the board, you have A, B, C, D. So A is this one. Simply plug it into the one that's, that's marked 1PA. Next one is B. Next one is C. but not least is D. We'll, we'll tie all this up and make it pretty here in a little bit. Actually, let me go around this one. All right, very important. Whenever you mount your joystick, the joystick has to, actually that's the bottom. The joystick is going to have to point towards the LCD. So this is your panel would set down like this. Your joystick would need to be just like this. That cable pointing towards the LCD. That's very, very, very important. If not, the cable won't be wired correctly. So we'll set this in. I've already knocked the holes out for this. That way I didn't have to align it. Yeah. 
Whoop, drop a screw. It's easier if you take and set this on some books or something tall. That way you can set it flat and do this. If you don't have the holes, it makes it even harder. Find my screw that I dropped. I'm actually surprised it was actually by my feet. Usually, when you drop something, you know it, it goes 20 feet the other direction. I'm not about all that overkill. Two screws in this is plenty. Some people put all four, which I don't really know why. All right, and there is that. Simple as that. And then you'll take your Sanwa cable. And on the cable, You'll notice it has this little wing. The wing goes up. So the wing will actually go here at the top and lock in. Push that in. And I'm gonna figure out the best way to run this. But it'll plug in to right here. Excuse me, I'm sorry, it'll plug in on this other side, the one of Mark Player 1. So that's not gonna go far. Again, these only plug in one way. They have the guides, so you can't mess it up. All right, and there is your panel populated 100%. I'm gonna stop the video real quick and I'm gonna clean up the wiring. All right, I have that some, somewhat tied up. So what we wanna do now, this cable that comes with the kit, this is your harness that plugs into this, that will plug into the PCB, or to the Pandora, I should say. On this right here, you're not gonna use the red and brown you're not going to use. You're going to hook the speaker directly into the Pandora. So I'm just going to take it and tie it up. So we'll just tie that up. And then all you want to do is take and plug this into the board it only goes one, uh, one way it has a lock you can see like a, a lock clip right there so it only plugs in one direction on this and that is now ready to go Me take and put the uh, panel back down let me find the screws for it actually before we set the control panel down we need to set the the pandora in there and set this in there you need to make sure that this face is that way since you have to plug everything into it and on this stuff you're going to have to pre-drill it there's no way around it the stuff just kind of splits and fluffs up I am not a fan of MDF for that reason. I've already got my hole pre-drilled. Extremely poor magnet. Right, 
screw that down at the end it'll look like that I just I, I pushed it up all the way against this right here because the back doesn't need to be uh, accessed at all and that'll give you a little more room up front so push it all the way back and I would do it on this same side that I have it on and what you'll want to do is you'll want to go ahead and take the speaker you can go ahead and plug that in and plug it into the two pin JST that's right here just like so before you stick the control panel back down go ahead and plug in some cables it'll make it a little bit easier your harness your main harness go ahead and plug it in it'll plug in I know it's gonna be hard to see because it's so dark in here but it'll plug in here on the end it only goes one place and again it has a lock so it can only plug in one direction so plug that in and then take your six pin it'll plug in right right beside where you plugged in the speaker at there so you should look something like that and now you can put the control deck on we got the control panel on it now it's ready to go so let's start on the back the back is a pretty quick hook up all you have left is your extension cable, your HDMI cable, and a splitter. And of course the main power pack. All you want to do is uh, take your HDMI cable and plug it in. Zip ties are your friends, much easier than rubber bands. That is now plugged in to the Pandora. And then we're going to take your Y cable and plug it in at the top here. Then you'll need the extension. I'm going to grab a few zip ties. This one, connect it to 
this. There she runs through there. Oops. I'm going backwards here. I am going backwards. Click on to the Y. And then plug into the Pandora. And then take the main power coming in, run it under here, and plug into the bottom the female of the splitter. It's there, kind of tight. Don't really like that. At the end of the day, it'll make it. This is tight. I'm going to stick you a zip tie through there and you can put it back just like it was. Just miss the red one. all that up in there. It's not it's not too tight. It'll be alright. All you'll need to do is take the power pack that it comes with and plug into here. You can stick all the back back on it. Let's go ahead and give it a test run. power pack is included you'll need the bigger power pack the one that comes with the arcade one up is not anywhere near big enough turn the power switch on the little minus sign is the power Take it a second to boot up. So, so don't get nervous if it doesn't start right away. And the first time you boot this, it may actually be in uh, horizontal mode. 
it may actually look like this when you boot up. I think this is the way it comes from factory. It may look like that. If it looks like that, all you need to do to go from horizontal to vertical is push your B button, which is your second button right here, and just hold it down. And there you go. You'll also need to set it to free play. I've already got this one on it, but to do that, there's a black button on the Pandora on the front. Press it to get into the configuration. You can do an I.O. test. And select it and hit the button and you can test all your buttons. A, B, C, D. And then up, down, left, right. Player one. And then player two. And then to exit this, it says press 1P plus A. One player, press A. Then go into the system configuration, and you want to set this to free play. So use the A button, and it'll, it'll cycle through. Keep pushing it until it says free play. And then it says press back. Use player one button for back. And then go down to save settings. Again, it tells you what to do here at the bottom. A is okay. Yes. And there you are. To start the game now, simply hit the A button. The game will load. Press one player or two players. Thank you.